Hello students. Today I'm going to show you how to put together the puzzle cube in Inventor by creating an assembly of the six parts that you have successfully created. To begin doing that, we are going to choose assembly in the new options for Inventor. And when it loads up, we start with our basic ribbon in our browser and our drawing space. Before we can assemble anything, we have to have the parts we need on the screen. And to add the parts into our assembly, we move to the top left section of our ribbon. And we do not want place from content center, so I'm going to click here. We just want place, just regular old place. Now, it is important that you know where you saved your parts and it's important that you know their names. So I named all mine Puzzle Cube Part A, Puzzle Cube Part B, and so on. So here's Puzzle Cube Part A, and I click Open. Now to put the part down, I simply left click, and to tell it that that's all I need, because Inventor sometimes thinks, hey, you might need more than one of these, but if you only need one of these, then I just right click and say OK. Now I'm gonna go back and do the same thing, but this time I'm going to get part B. So I clicked on place. I'm scrolling down till I find part B. Click open. Click once to put it down. And then right click and say OK. Now just like if you were building a puzzle, you, did, you wouldn't want all the parts on top of each other. So scatter these around so you can see them. Now I'm going to go get part C. So I click on place. I scroll down until I find part C open, click once to put it down, right click and say OK. You should know now I'm going up here to get on place. I'm going to scroll down and find part D and click open and left click to put it down, right click to say that's all. Click on place. I need part E. Find part E, click open left click to put it down, right click and say OK. I'm going to zoom out to make sure I have space for another part. I need part F. Click on place, scroll down, find part F, and open, left click to place it, right click and say OK. Now all of these parts right now can be dragged around and moved you can even right click on them and there's an option here for rotate but we don't really need to try and put this together uh, by dragging them around we want to use inventor to lock these pieces into the correct place and so the yellow part is part a uh, i'm going to kind of consider that my base part so i'm going to right click on it and I'm going to ground it. What that means is it won't move now. Now that I've told it to be grounded, it's kind of stuck in place. But I did that so that all these other parts will be built onto part A, which is the yellow part. I'm going to begin by placing part D, which is this red part, on top of the puzzle cube. Now you're asking where or how do I know which part goes where. Um, that's on Blackboard. There's the answer key uh, that shows how the puzzle cube is assembled. Plus we have the actual puzzle cubes if you need to look at one. Now this part should be laying down kind of backwards and sitting on top of this. But instead of rotating it, I'm going to use a constraint. So I'm going to come up here and click on constraint. And I want the type to be a mate, but I want the solution to be flush. And what that means is it lines up the surfaces even with each other. And so I'm going to tell Inventor wants to know which two faces, which two surfaces. So I'm going to tell Inventor that this top surface of the yellow piece, click, should be flush with this surface of the red piece. And if this wasn't the right, sh the right part, then I would need to flip it over uh, or, or tumble my screen. I'll show you that in a moment. So I click on this. 
and Inventor rolled that part over and I just click apply. Next, I want these pieces, these surfaces right here to be flush with this one and click apply. And then finally, I'm going to have to spin this around a little, so I'm going to use my orbit tool. And the way orbit works is you click inside the blue circle and drag it around to tumble or spin this over. I want to be able to see, and you right click to exit orbit, I want to see this surface or this, this one right here, but I want this surface to be flush with this surface and then I click apply. Now that has anchored the red piece. The red piece will not move anymore. If I cancel out of all this, everything is stuck together, nothing will move. The next piece I'm gonna look at will be uh, this pink piece. It kinda of goes over on this side over here. So if it helps, you can rearrange your pieces a little bit just to kinda of get them close to where they go. But this pink piece is facing the wrong direction and we're going to use the same tool to kind of put this in place. I'm going to orbit it around a little bit so I can see a little differently kind of looking at it and it's actually kind of upside down. We want the bottom of this piece over here to be flush with the top of the red piece. So I'm going to have to do this in two steps. I'm going to click on constrain and click on flush. I want the top of the red piece to be flush with the bottom of the pink piece right here. So I just click flush. And that flipped the pink piece over and click apply. Okay, so I'm going to tumble or, or orbit my screen around. And in looking at the actual Puzzle Cube solution, I know that this side right here is going to be flush with this side of the yellow. So I'm going to click this and then click this an inventor will spin the pink part around and then I click apply. Now if I investigate this, if I look closely and, and turn this around, you'll see that the top surfaces are flush and the left hand surfaces are flush. All that's left is to put the flush constraint, so flush. This little piece here is going to be flush with all of this part and then click apply. So let's do the other side. I'm going to tumble this around and we'll do this other side over here. It's the blue, my blue part. Um, you may have created parts in a different color, but for me it's the blue part. And the blue part's kind of, kind of sitting the right direction, but not really. Uh, the main thing is, is I want this surface to be flush with this side of the cube. And so that should turn that should turn the blue part 90 degrees like that. And then click apply. And so what I did, if we if we take a look, you'll see that that's now flush with that side. Now it's sitting real tall or sitting up high. So we're going to do flush the top surface with the top of the red and apply it. We have to apply each one. And then finally, we want to flush this surface with this part and then click apply. There are two parts left. One goes on the back and one goes on the bottom. It's the purple one that goes on the back and the green one that kind of goes down here on the bottom. So I'm going to move these around a little bit so that they're not in the way of each other. And let's go ahead and do the green piece first. So I'm going to turn this, tumble it to where I'm looking kind of down here at the bottom of the puzzle cube. May have to take a couple of tries to tumble this route. There we go. Oh! Okay. And so now I can kind of see the part of the green part that I need and the, the bottom of the puzzle cube. So constrain, flush, this side of the green with this side of the puzzle cube. If that little thing pops up, just wait for it to go away and then click apply. Now if I double check it, see that's now matched up. Now I just need to do my other two surfaces. I want to flush this side of the green piece with this side of the yellow. 
And then finally, I messed up. Do y'all see that I messed up? Good. Now I get to demonstrate how to fix it. This was not on purpose, y'all. I wanted to do this perfectly. But here's how we fix it, okay? With the part selected, over here in my browser, that's why it's important that we keep the browser here, I click on the little tiny plus mark to open up that part. Here are my other constraints. Now, I'm going to get rid of those constraints because what I should have done is this piece over here, right here, that should have been flush with this side. I, I messed up. So we're going to delete by right-clicking and delete, right-clicking and delete those two constraints. Now this part can move around again. It's not constrained anymore. I'm going to be a little more careful. I don't want to have to show you how to fix things twice, but we're going to do flush. This time I'm going to get this piece here and this side. That's the direction that it should have been facing in. The other one, the top, and the top apply and then finally you can see the one that's missing this surface and this surface and apply so sorry that I had to do that one twice but it was good that you got to see how to fix it and now the purple one you can kind of see where it goes and you can kind of see how it needs to be oriented if I tumble this around a little more, you want to be able to see your surfaces. If you can't see your surfaces very well, then you should rotate your part. No, okay, ro rotate your view um, until you can see it. So I know that I need the top surface to be flush with this and apply. And it looks like. I've already messed up. It looks like this is upside down, doesn't it? So we're going to cancel that. This is part C. So I'm going to expand part C and I'm going to delete that. I already messed up. So let's try again. Constrain, flush, this side of the puzzle cube, and then I have to roll this over with this side of the part. That flipped it over and applied. Tumble this back over. Now it looks like we're facing the right direction. So now what I want to do is I want this side right here to be flush with the red. And apply it. Now I'm going to drag it around a second just so you can see it's in the right orientation. I just need one more constraint. In that last constraint you have a couple of choices. We can do a flush between this side and here or if we wanted, we could turn this over and we could do a flush over here. So since I'm already looking at this side right here, I'll just do it over here. Constrain, flush, this surface and this surface, and congratulations, now your puzzle cube is finished. I want to show one more thing before I end the video. If at any time one of your parts had a problem, like maybe there was a gap or something didn't line up right. To edit a part without leaving the assembly, just double click on the part and notice that that takes us to part mode instead of assembly mode. And over here that shows me this puzzle cube part B, the others are grayed out. And if I want to edit my sketch, the sketch is, is it's inside extrusion. So I click here and there's my sketch. So I double click on it and there's my sketch that I can edit. So if I needed to add a dimension or maybe um, there's something incorrect, if there's a dimension that's not accurate, then we could add those, those dimensions or correct, make them, make them say the proper value uh, to, to have that fixed. And then once you're done editing it, you say finish sketch. And then to go back to the assembly, you click on the return button to return to the assembly. And at this point, this is a finished and assembled puzzle cube. And I'm going to stop this video here. 
and I will uh, be coming around the room to help you with any questions you have.